So from our last calculation, r is 0.86. There's this something else called r squared. Okay, now that's something else. That's the coefficient of determination. Now this is where it gets really fun. Okay, it's really easy to calculate. You just square r. All right, you just go 0.86 squared. And you guys know how to do that. Or you get it off the calculator which says r squared is 0.74. I probably should change that to a 5. I should round. 0.75. So, R shows us there's a relatively strong linear relationship between the two variables. So what does R squared show us? All right. Sorry, the approximate... No, nice try. What R squared tells us, guys, is what percentage or what proportion of the change in one is because of the other. Okay, so we had two variables, population and number of primary schools. Okay, this means that 75% of the variation in the number of primary schools can be linked to this population. 75% of the variation in the primary schools in that area are linked to the population. That's a pretty strong correlation, isn't it? If that was 0.25, all right, it would be 25%, and you'd be saying not a strong correlation. All right? But it's 0.75. 75% of the change in Y is because of X. Okay, so it's showing us how much of a correlation there is between them. How much the change in Y is because of X. Does that make sense? So 2G is all about using your calculator to come up with those numbers and then interpreting those numbers. So you can all interpret R. I worry about you guys interpreting this, but with practice, you guys will be able to do it. Okay, you need to remember, I'll write down a sentence for you. If I can get the camera set up, work out where I'm writing, there it is. So, R squared times by 100 equals percent. Okay, that's one key thing you need to remember. That percentage, okay, means that such and such percent of the change in y, all right, variable y, is because of the change in x. Okay, so if we swap that dependent, okay, so so much percent of the change in a dependent variable is because of the independent one. So if we tie it back to those words, it's not going to make sense. If you say that sentence and you put x here, all right, it's not going to make sense, is it? Because x doesn't depend on any others to change. It's independent. Make sense? So be very careful. When you're writing a sentence like this, which you're going to have to do, the percentage of the change in the dependent or the y is because of the change in the x or the independent. Stuff like this in the yes. All right. They ask you. I've been, as I said, I've been looking through exam papers quite a bit lately. They do ask you to interpret a lot of stuff. All right, and we will practice quite a bit of it. But that there is the key to answering the questions that ask you to what does this mean? All right. Everyone, good.